Artificial pen pressure? Check. Liquify tool? Check. Posable 3D models? Check. Direct access to custom brushes and materials in the asset store? Check. New and simplified user interface that makes drawing on your phone easier than ever? Let's check it out. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in on today's video. Today I'm going to show you how you can create artwork on your phone using the new just released Clip Studio Paint interface. I'm going to take you on a tour through the new simplified user interface and teach you how you can create artwork directly on your smartphone, whether you want to create illustrations from start to finish on your smartphone or bring it over to your iPad or your other tablet later on, I'll take you through the entire process. And of course, thanks a lot to Clip Studio Paint for making this video possible and being today's sponsor. Clip Studio Paint has been my preferred drawing app for a few years now on all of my devices and I'm super grateful for their continued support of my channel. If you want to follow along yourself through this video, you can go and download Clip Studio Paint on your smartphone on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. The trial allows you to use the app for free for one hour each day, so you can kind of use that trial to get a feeling of the app for yourself. And without further ado, the tour of the new simplified interface begins. When you open the Clip Studio Paint app, you'll land here on the home page. From here, you can access the news, official tutorials, assets, as well as tips for using Clip Studio Paint in general. It's also here that you can access your current projects, your account, and the general app menu. When you create a new canvas, you have a few options to choose from in this horizontal scroll menu here. Today, we'll be creating an illustration, and I think I'll just start with the screen size preset. This is the simplified user interface. For a quick comparison, here's what the old interface looked like. Now, I say old, but you can actually still access the previous interface at any time. It is now known as Studio Mode, and you can access it through the menu up here to the right. The Studio Mode can seem a bit more complicated to navigate, and that is why the Simple Mode was added, simply to make it easier and more efficient to draw on your phone. But meanwhile, keeping the old interface as a more advanced Studio Mode, she will always have access to the entire tool set of Clip Studio Paint right here on your phone. The simple mode contains all the necessary tools for drawing without any distractions. It mainly consists of a menu with five icons at the bottom, as well as a subtool menu just above it. The first icon allows you to quickly switch between your brush and the eraser. The next icon lets you choose between eight essential drawing tools like the fill tool, the eyedropper and of course your brush. The middle icon contains your brush library. Clip Studio Paint comes with a lot of great pre-installed brushes, but you also have access directly to the asset store here, so you can download more custom brushes if you want to. The next icon on the menu is your color tool, from where you can pick colors manually or pick from a variety of pre-made color sets. You can, of course, also create your own color sets. And last but not least, the last icon is the Layers panel. If you drag the Layers panel out towards the canvas, you'll enlarge it so you can see the layers' names and create folders as well. Here you can add or delete layers, move layers around, change their opacity, use clipping masks, alpha locking, as well as controlling layer blending modes. Yes, they are all here. <laughs> There are a few more layer features hidden in this menu right here. For each tool that you pick, the sub-menu will change and show the sub-tools of the main tool that you have selected. To navigate the canvas, use two fingers to move around and to zoom in and out on your canvas. And even if your phone does not support pen pressure, like mine and most of the smartphones, the app itself actually mimics pen pressure on its brushes fairly well, which is pretty cool. And now that you have had a short but pretty complete tour of the simplified interface, let's go ahead and create an illustration. I kind of want to use the full potential of the app, so let's bring in a 3D model to use as base for our pose. You can find the 3D models in your materials menu up here at the top. I'm going to pick this female model right here and drag her onto the canvas. You can control the camera, a few model appearances, and you can also apply existing poses or body shapes from here. You can of course download more pose and model related assets from the asset store as well. 
If you want to pose your model completely manually and in more detail, just switch over to studio mode and use the object tool to control each joint on the model. And in case you didn't notice, you can also access the body shapes options from studio mode. Alright, I think I will go ahead with this pose today. I'll switch back to simple mode, go to my layers and lower the opacity of my model layer. Then I'll add a new layer and sketch my base on top. If you prefer to sketch loosely without a model reference, just jump right ahead to this part and start sketching. And I'm just using the pre-installed pencil brush for sketching today. A quick tip I'll give you is to temporarily turn off your phone's auto rotation if you don't want the interface to go all over the place if you rotate your phone around when you're drawing. So first I do a rough sketch for the outline of the pose. Then I adjust the rough sketch a bit before lowering the opacity on this layer and start drawing a detailed sketch on a new layer on top. For me it was easier to raise my phone a bit using this plastic tablet stand from IKEA and not draw while holding the phone in my hand. When I was almost done with the detailed sketch, I adjusted it a bit more using the liquify tool and the move tool. I also flipped the canvas a few times just to check out look. Time to line art! I started by testing a bunch of pre-installed brushes as well as some custom brushes from the asset store. The asset store in the browser links directly to your Clip Studio Paint app when you download new assets and they're even automatically added to your library. It doesn't get any easier than this. And if you'd like to, you can also adjust the settings on your brushes. Since most phones don't have pressure sensitivity, it might be worthwhile to check out these settings and see if adjusting them works just better for you. Go to your brushes panel and tap the three dots at the top right corner and select the settings menu that appears here. Here you can adjust the stabilization on your brushes as well as control the start and end points. For reference, when I was doing the line art, I had my stabilization at 20. The start and end point values control how much easing in and out will be done on the brush tip. In other words, how much pressure the brush will mimic. Please note that these settings are global for all brushes in your app and not brush specific. To line my drawing, I ended up using the inbuilt brush called Textured Pen. Finally, I decided to change the facial expression and use the liquify tool to do some general adjustments. I also found out I disliked the cropping I was going with, so I adjusted the canvas size before finally moving on to coloring. Putting in the base colors was a very fast process. I just used the fill tool followed by a hard brush to fill in the little gaps left without color. And here's a neat little trick for you. If you use the fill tool while it refers to all layers, you can just drag your stylus or your finger across multiple areas to fill them all in without having to lift and press each time. Additionally, if you turn on close gap, the fill tool will automatically perceive a gap in your line art as an enclosement and not let color bleed into the next area. You can control the tolerance for this feature specifically in the settings under the toggle button. And a little word of advice, I always turn on area scaling when I use the fill tool. It means that the fill tool will expand its color area just a tiny bit so that you're sure that the color bleeds below your line art and not just up to the line art, leaving little visible pixels uncolored. So turn on area scaling because it can really do you a favor. And by the way, I created a new layer for each base color layer that I filled in. That's just my process. Now for some of the most exciting parts of this video, it's time for shading and rendering. I wanted to create a look with a mix of hard and soft shadows, and I wanted this little phone illustration to look more polished than any previous phone illustrations I've done. So for this section I'm going to focus on blending, because that's what I think can be the biggest obstacle for especially new phone artists. The Clip Studio Paint app fortunately comes with a few pre-installed blenders that are really good at their job. So here's a short demonstration of the blenders. There's the main blender brush at the top of the list. Then there's the blur blender, which turned out to be my favorite. 
It seems to blend by blurring the colors together. It's super easy to use and it gives a nice and smooth result. The fingertip is more like a smudge tool that will drag your colors around. And the paint of the blender requires a bit more manual painting, but also leaves a really nice texture. The wet blender works similar, but has a different texture. And finally, the textured blender, which works kind of the same way as the previous two, but produces a blending result, but looks like a mix of the wet blender and the painterly blender. A few times while I was shading this illustration, I went into studio mode to use the tonal adjustments, but for 98 if not 99% of the time, I only used the simplified interface. Since my illustration here didn't really have a separate rendering stage, but it instead got kind of mixed in with the shading stage, I will try my best to explain my process. For example, when I worked on the eyes, I used the lasso tool to isolate the line art of the pupils so I could easily color them without affecting the line art around them. I also used layer blending modes to add some reflective light in the eyes. At this point of the illustration, I zoomed out and stared at it for a while and decided it was just too boring as is. I wanted to add a hand or something, but it required me to change her entire arm as well. So I created a new layer on top of all my color layers and my line art layers and just started painting in a new arm as well as a hand to go with it. I fiddled around for a while because I was really unsure how I wanted the hand to be positioned. Ultimately, I ended up copying the hand to the other side and kind of have the character reach out towards us. I thought it would add some interesting depth and some fun shadows to play with. Finally, I decided to put some more details in my shading of the eyes, as well as adding some dramatic lighting. For my process, lighting is a big part of rendering, because it helps creating believable results. So much of my rendering process at the end is just pure lights and shadows. But generally, I feel like it was more about shading in this illustration, and I really didn't do that much rendering. As a nice little finishing touch though, I added little light particles. I created them by adding a lot of little white dots on a new layer, went into studio mode and used the motion blur and Gaussian blur filters on them. I also very quickly adjusted the color balance and the tone curve before doing the final adjustments on the illustration. By the way, if you're painting a character and you don't want to paint in a full background, like I wouldn't blame you, you can just use the asset library to pick and insert background elements or entire backgrounds. And voila, entirely made on the phone using Clip Studio Paint. With the new simplified interface for the phone app, it has become much more intuitive to just pick up your phone and just start drawing. And like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter if you just use the phone app to do some light sketching once in a while to finish the illustration on your computer or iPad later, because you can easily set up the cloud to synchronize your projects on your phone app so you can open them directly on your computer or iPad. The Clip Studio Paint for your smartphone is also very affordable for 99 cents a month if you have a monthly plan, but if you sign up for an annual plan, you can get the app for $6.49 a year. But as I also mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is a trial for this app as well, where you can use the app for one whole hour each day. Just search for Clip Studio Paint on the Apple Store or on the Google Play Store or follow the link down below. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Like, subscribe, hit the ding dong, all that jazz we always talk about. And until next time, take care. Bye bye! Ow.